because a part of this fear is that you know that you are not in control. You're losing control. This thing is so strong and is pulling you and you're falling in love with God. Something is really calling you. You're not interested in other things. Everything else is boring you. It depends where you are, you are at your level of spirituality. But you start being dissatisfied with different things. Like you used to go drinking with your friends. You kind of lost your interest in doing that. Or you used to get together with your friends and play cards. Or the worldly stuff. People sit together and talk about politics. You start losing your interest in the worldly stuff. And it could be very subtle and it could be very quick. It depends on who you are and where you're at. So sometimes it takes a lifetime. For those of you who are older and you've been on this path for a long time, so you've been brought to this place gradually and you're cooking. And on this way, a lot of things can happen. A lot of you may go through a lot of severe challenges in this life. So all kinds of things can happen to you, whether physically you go through challenges, whether you've been abused uh, sexually in your childhood, you've been abandoned, you've been beaten up, you've been raped, uh, you've been kicked out of your home, you had abusive parents, maybe in your earlier parts of your life. Um, all kinds of different things could have happened. I'm not saying necessarily that is always going to be bad stuff, but normally it's shock treatments. Because if good things keep happening to us, we fall asleep. But when this awakening part happens, the activation begin to happen. Normally it's shock, shock treatments. And what they do is they take you into isolation. A part of this path is that you get isolated. And this, in this isolation, you're forced to face yourself. And normally in this isolation, this, this taste starts to happen. That you're not really happy with ordinary world anymore. Everything starts to become meaningless and you lose your taste for it. And you're craving for spiritual teachings. You're craving for spiritual um, friends, people who are on the same path. And even on a spiritual path, as you're maturing, you realize that there's a lot of bullshit on the surface. The spiritual path is the same thing as the business world and the world. There's different layers of it, especially today with the internet and having access to a lot of different teachings and teachers. So it's easy for anyone to set up a couple of cameras and start teaching on internet and having an audience so there's a lot of bullshit there too, that you need to weed through that bullshit. So even on the spiritual path that you enter into, that's still you're not safe. There's a lot of blah, blah, blah. So you gotta, you have to keep on track and you have to keep checking in with your heart, whether you're happy with and you're resonating with what is being presented to you or not, and not get deviated from your path. And there's going to be times that what happens 
is a lot of people are going in this direction to whatever and you feel like oh okay maybe I should follow them because if I don't go with them I'm gonna be alone so you go, and you're not really into it but you kind of want to be with your group so you deviate and you go in that direction and normally it ends up you end up being uh, dissatisfied and you come back so for a lot of us as we get closer to the goal, to where we need to get to, you're going to be forced at different stretches of time. It could be whatever, six months, five years, I don't know. It depends on the person. There are times you're going to be lonely. You're going to be alone. And you're not going to have any companionship in your own level who understands what's happening to you now we're lucky we can create this kind of communities or their spiritual centers or ashrams that we gather around the teacher and we find like-minded people and then they're open-hearted and you find some friends so but i'm just sharing with you that the way out is not necessarily easy it is scary when especially working on yourself if you're sincere and really working on yourself you're gonna have to look at your dark side and your shadows and it can get very scary at times because there are these hidden parts of you that you haven't looked at them and very comfortably you push them aside and a lot of us can easily go into denial it's a very easy thing to do so you need to kind of check in with yourself and see where you're at not give yourself a break when it comes to that and keep pushing through and keep going forward and in this going forward whether you're walking on this path alone by yourself but it feels right or you have companions or teachers guides that you can refer to far out that would be wonderful but you have to walk it on your own and keep going forward and not stop so the way out is sometimes scary because the times you have to let go of a part of yourself whatever it is see where you have your hang-ups you're worried about your money you're worried about your health your youth, your body, your family, your partner, your pets. Just see where you really get really frightened about. And you're going to have to let go of all of them. At the end of the day, when they call you home and you got to go home, you're going to have to let everything go. You can't carry any of them with you. So why not now that you have an opportunity to let them go inside? I'm not saying that you donate all of your money to some someone or an institution. You let it go inside yourself. Or you let go of your partner inside yourself.